Citizens, a few days ago, on the third day of the second month, a date that will live forever in infamy, the Kerbal's Democratic Republic of Northern Cthulhu was suddenly and deliberately attacked by the naval and air forces of Aganarch Industries. We are at peace with that nation, and even about to enter talks with its government to protect the peace of Eastern Cthulhu. It will be recorded that the sheer scale and ferocity of this attack has never been before seen on this planet. The attack on our island nations has caused severe damage to our defensive forces, and I regret to inform you that many innocent children's lives were lost in these cowardly strikes against our nation. As Commander-in-Chief of our forces, I have directed that all measures will be taken for our defenses, and that always will our whole nation remember the character of the onslaught against us. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the Clothulians, in their righteous might, will win through to absolute victory. Hey guys and welcome back to Twitchy Plays Kerbal Collaborative Warfare, the version of Kerbal Space Program where four YouTubers have split up the bases of Kerb inside and are using the BD Armory mod to have at each other in all our open warfare. Before we get anywhere guys, I would like to make a big, big personal apology about how long it's taken me to make this episode. Mainly because I was horrendously ill and I'm not going to go into the details of how ill I was. Let's just say it was more than a little bit messy. I hope from the very bottom of my battle system that you will indeed forgive me. And we're going to talk about this, the boy George. It is my answer to Aganarch's silverfish uh, in the shape of a chameleon, hence the name. If you don't get it, go live in the 80s or something. Piloted by the latest in our long line of mighty war heroes, Kerberos Kerman. He is indeed on this ship because he has a personal vendetta against the silverfish. He was out partying and having a good holiday with his friends and family over on the Jeb Islands over, well, over to the east of me right now, when suddenly his margaritas and salsa dancing was hideously interrupted by a cruise missile coming along and wiping out his entire family, his wife, his children, even his grandmother. Shame on you, Agonarch, shame on you. Dear leader, after hearing his cries of anguish from halfway across the planet, flew like Superman, stuck his arm forwards and flew over to the Jeb Islands and picked up his frail, broken body from the debris and remains of the holiday chalet. The juxtaposition between all the festivities and the pure, unbridled destruction touched their leader's heart and he offered Kerberos a chance, a chance to go out and take personal revenge against the hideous war machine that brought this destruction upon him. Now I may have gone a little bit over the top when designing this vessel, I was trying to match the silverfish but if I was to actually redesign this again I would get rid of the goalkeeper, there was absolutely no re need for it to be there and I would also get rid of about half of the cruise missiles but much like Aganarch I was worried about those uh, white squares turning up and destroying my cruise missiles, in testing it happened quite a bit and this is why I was doing this turn that you see me performing right here. I was going to launch these missiles from the middle of the ocean, much like Aganarch, but then I decided, no, I know this turf, I know the local land myself, I think it's probably time for us to use that local knowledge and go find a good, solid patch of terra firma, put our feet down and then not have to worry about any of that. So yeah, as I say, I would maybe have not taken quite so many cruise missiles with me. Another small confession I have to make at this moment is this is actually the fourth vehicle that I designed for this mission. Almost every other vehicle that I designed though ended up being so horrendously top heavy that the moment I loaded it up into the real world it turned over, exploded, everything blew up. And I think you'll admit that that would not have made a, uh, a very good turn. So I carried on at it until we made something that actually worked. This is by no means what I was going for. Uh, I am going to continue working on the ideas that I had before now, so that you know the big, big idea that I did have to immediately come come back and strike against him can probably be worked on. But you will have to wait for a later episode to find out what I'm going on about that because I don't want the others to know and beat me to it. Anyway, we've got a long way to go and not very much to talk about because crossing over water is not the the highlight of the game. It has to be said. Anyway, let's listen to some music as we let this happen.
are totally epic. Right, so we've been coming in here to try and get ourselves behind this hill here. The main thought process behind this is almost strictly an RP one. You know, I could have done this from almost anywhere. But Kerberos Kerman, he knows the lay of the land around here. He knows what's going on. He knows if he hides behind those hills, the silverfish will not even see what is coming towards them. You may notice at the rear of the boy George there, there is a piece of technology that you might actually recognise from the silverfish. So while Kerberos and the other engineers were hanging around trying to figure out how we could make this vehicle happen properly, we found someone just kicking around on the KSC island. Uh, it went by the name of John B. Kerman, and he was like, Hey guys, I see you're struggling with something. Well, I was recently on a ship that I got kicked off of, and they had solved this issue for you, so why don't you take this bit of technology for a small fee? And I was like, yeah, go on then. I think we might just very well do that. So uh, again, thank you, Egg and Arch. So a round of derp is about to come up, and I'd like to explain. So when I fired that missile, I managed to double-click, and that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I went to, like, select the silverfish, hit the wrong button, and it was like, oh, well, we switched to here. Let's make sure everything's set up right. Team A, guard mode, great. Switched back and got a crash. But that was alright because nothing much had happened. You can see here the missile is still wasted. So we are going to try and set that up again a little bit more intelligently this time. We're going to take a moment and make sure we set the target. We are not going to double click anything. We're just going to hold the ripple down. And we're just going to let a few of these go. Uh, five of them in total. This was just in case there was any sort of... Um, any of those uh, white squares appear. What well, I, I normally would send four. The fifth was just like, you know, a baker's dozen just to make sure. And whilst these missiles are flying, seems like a good time to talk about all the crashes we've been having. It's literally at the moment only when I try to transfer from one ship to the other. So generally it's okay, though any sort of loading or saving or swapping vehicles is always a very sensitive point just to see what's going on there. Right, so one of my missiles has exploded. The silverfish is totally laying it down. I think we actually got two of them. Um, but even then, it took this last one to fully destroy everything that was going on with the silverfish so i've got to say well done agonarch that was one tough ship it took all the missiles uh, and did very good job at defending itself a very good job at defending itself now we have the long slow drive of trying to get over there i could have pushed myself further up onto my supports and made myself like fly over there like i did with the water the problem with that is over bouncy terrain this does have a habit of bouncing up and down and digging its nose in and getting all sorts of horrendous things happening and making it explode so we're going to drive over on the wheels while we're on uh, on solid land like this takes a long time as i say i mean if we have a look now the time is a uh, mission time of 11 minutes now one of the main things you have to bear in mind here is i was trying to count this as we were going uh we are currently in four times acceleration thanks to the wonder of editing and if you look at the mission time on the top left it is clicking along at normal rate which just goes to show how long this actually took. And I'm not going to wait, make you watch through all this or even listen to some truly epic music again. I think we're just going to jump forwards a little bit. A mere six minutes on the mission clock, and that is going to be 24 minutes in real time. Probably closer to 20, if I'm to be honest. But here we are in front of the silverfish. Uh, these cannons on the side turns out pretty rubbish uh, I, I didn't know how good they were I literally as I say just trying to match the weapons on the silverfish there so I thought I'd stick them on the side and see what they were like one thing I have noticed is that the pings off the floor in a very interesting manner there but that's okay this is all things we can deal with uh, another thing I have noticed is if we just go around here we've got a crew capsule all separate and stuff so I think we might keep hold of that as a prisoner Anyway, time to blow up some uh, some debris here. We don't we don't want things to be on here. Um, now, I said that the goalkeeper was useless, and this is where I decided that the goalkeeper was useless. Literally every other weapon that I wanted to use was just as useful as the goalkeeper here. So yeah, very much. Next time I will take that away. I started using my Vulcan turrets, and I was like, actually, I want to uh, save the ammo on here. But whilst using them, I did find out something very interesting. I was trying to blow up those hover ports there. You can see at the one that Agonarch has on the floor right there. No no matter what I did, all the bullets seemed to literally just bounce off it. So, you know, if we're trying to make another sort of indestructible thing, that is definitely the way to do it. Like, there's those probe cores, and then there's this. Now to move on with the more important stuff. 
Uh, Kerberos is going to get out and put down his flag. Of course, it needs to be a flag. This is the entire purpose of being out here. We're going to name it the KFC and Glories to Leader, of course. All right, now we need to try and make our way back into the Boy George. I was uh, tempted to grab our prisoner, I can't remember what her name is now, out of Agonarch's vehicle and throw her into the back of the Boy George, as Boy George does, in fact, have a way of riding his face. Uh, it, it, opens up and you can jump onto the uh, the command capsule there and that'll be all great but no I put him in the back here because that's what we're going to do and now we need to go and find ourselves a nice place to hide out and uh, it takes a while to turn around and do stuff so what I'm going to do is once again jump forward to show you our defensive position. I decided that maybe it's better to use our environment to help us out here like th this does have very good defensive capabilities but if we can kind of narrow the way that those missiles can attack us that would be much better again. Rejoice, citizens! Our first mission against the terror that is the Agonarch Industries has ended in success. We have taken back our capital city and have reasserted our authority on the local area. Today's second mission is manned by Thumpgan Kerman, another survivor from the heinous attacks that Agonarch had perpetrated upon our, our nation. Last mission was uh, taking back over to the Kerbal Space Center. This one is to take care of all the holes that we have in our defensive capabilities here. So, our first port of call is of course the KSC island that we took off from here. Now, I could have just dumped things on the land there, but that's, that's not how I like to do things. As you may have been noticing from the past couple of episodes, I really like to make airdrops. So, what we're going to do here is just drop a couple of units, let them parachute down for a nice safe landing, and then hopefully put them on guard mode, get everything ready, and have two small defensive structures ready for go. Now, these are tiny little things they have a couple of 30 millimeter cannons on them and a couple of uh, sidewinders each this is not going to defend against anything on the scale of the silverfish this is really only there to defend against um, any sort of fighter aircraft that might be coming in basically to make it so that Agonarch can't just kind of walk in and replace his replace the um the flag there he's actually going to have to send something in for a bit of a fight obviously if he sends a capital ship well, you know, that's a whole different game we're going to be playing then. I definitely think at some point in the future we're going to have to make some sort of one capital ship per nation ruling, else we're going to just end up with capital ships facing off against each other and the whole game grinding to a halt from the part limit. I don't know, or something like that anyway. So with that double drop taken care of, we're going to start taking off at a 45 degree from the, the surface of the planet, and we're going to be heading our way over to Jeb's Retreat. That is the second base, or the first base I suppose, that Agonarch decided that he wanted to blow everything up on so we need to go and replace all the stuff there now this is quite a flight over a hundred kilometers there so i think what we're going to do is take a small jump forwards to this position where we are far too high up going far too far forward so we're just going to cut all the engine and slam our wings uh, sideways onto our flight path so we can bleed off a whole load of speed you will see on our base locator on the top left there we are 26 kilometers away and we are 14 kilometers above the surface of the planet that means we are further up than we are uh, along from it so kill all the engines start plummeting now one of the things that i had noticed on the on the fly over here was i was starting to get a little bit nose heavy so whilst we were plummeting i decided to do a little bit of rearrangement of the fuel here uh, this did take a little bit longer than i was expecting so once we started breaking through the bottom of the cloud layer i had to start nosing up and trying to bring myself into a bit more of a level flight situation i then turned off all the fuel uh, drain at the back there so we can try and keep some of the weight backwards and there is our target so what we're going to do is make a small corrective measure here turn off our engines and oh Oh, quick, run a commercial. I don't care if you don't know which one, just throw anyone in there. I don't care, just that one. That in celebration of the upcoming victory against Agonarch Industries, Dear Leader has invented this stunning new range of hairstyles. Gone are the times of all looking the same, now we can express our own individual love of Dear Leader. So head on down to your state sanctioned stylist to show just how fashionable you are. Citizens, rejoice! The victory is ours! Our mission, deploying drones at the undefended base, was a success, and in no way was the last mission supposed to have a detachable fighter craft that would fly onto the land of Arkanarch and rain death and destruction upon his peoples. This world will soon be ours. Glories!